Let's talk magnets, specifically the main gun on the Riptide. That's right, this big, chonky piece of equipment here. It has this hose that hooks into it. You only get one hose, so you kind of, I've magnetized mine. And then the gun will just clip on here to the bottom of the arm. I wouldn't say that this is going to be an expert handyman's guide to magnetizing. This is more of a uh, Mad Maxian style guide to magnetizing because I don't want to put the pressure on me that it's going to be perfect. I'm just going to do it as it goes and just show you how I do it. Um, it's like a duck swimming through the water. You don't know what's under there as long as the magnet's hidden and the gun is hooked on. You don't know what's going on inside there, but I, I think it's going to be okay for the most part. The gun sits pretty steady and this little tube piece helps hold it in. Let's just talk about how to magnetize that main part. There's obviously other stuff on the Riptide that you want to magnetize. I have done the jetpacks so that I can do plasma rifles on there. I can also do smart missile systems, whatever loadout I want to do. I've magnetized the secondary weapon, but the primary one is, is very important to magnetize because it's an expensive kit and you want to be able to have those options going forward. Now, an optional piece to magnetize is this little round one. You only get one of these. And on my first gun, I magnetized it because on the ion accelerator, it goes on this back piece here. So on the ion accelerator, it would go on the back. And then when you switch it over to the burst cannon, it goes on the front. I only magnetized it on the first one because I realized that the ion accelerator is going to look okay. So here's the other side without the magnet holes drilled in. And I feel like the, cause I feel like the hole where the piece would go on the ion accelerator is shallower and looks better on its own. But when you compare it to the heavy burst cannon, this, it seems more raised. It just seems more open, like it's not supposed to be there. So that's why I'm going to leave it on this side. And then I'm going to leave this one just without it always. Another reason for that is because of the way I paint these, this dot will probably have orange or blue on it on the heavy burst cannon side, but on the ion side, it would be all tan. That introduces another interesting thing where if I did even magnetize it on all of them, it might not look right when I swap it. So I'm gonna leave mine on the burst cannon. You can magnetize it, but this is what I've come to. A couple things about magnets and this tutorial. I'm kind of expecting that you have either worked with magnets a tiny bit or kind of have a little bit of understanding about them. If not, there's probably videos that can explain how they work, but the basics are if you have, say, this is a roll of magnets, this is a, a one quarter inch width and a 1 16th inch depth. I'm going to be using uh, American standard measurements for all these. So if you are or doesn't use the inches or quarter inch type designations, I'm not going to know the exact differences, but Google is a great way to look those up. Okay, so basics about magnets. They have a poles, which it means a, they have a North Pole and a South Pole will, is what they say. And basically what we're looking at is one face of the magnet sticks to the opposite of the other magnet. So that's why if you have two and they stick together, so the basic understanding of these magnets, right? If I mark on the top of this magnet, a black line. So I, oh shoot, I don't know if this is gonna show up. I've got a black line I marked on this top magnet. And so if I put it on the bottom, now the, the mark is gone, the line is gone, because the, the face of the magnet that I marked can only attach to the opposite end of another magnet. So if I try to take this, this magnet with the line that I marked, so I put it back on top, um, so I can't, can you see the line? I can't, I honestly can't tell if you can see the line. But if I take this magnet and flip it over, it's not going to want, it just shot off across the table. Um, it won't, it won't go back against the way it came from. Um, so again, I don't know how to explain this the best way. I'm hoping that you kind of get magnets and play with them. 
or you kind of have understood that, uh, that philosophy, if you've magnetized your own minis and you've ever put the magnets in the wrong way and they've not connected, then you have this principle probably ingrained in your brain already. So um, one thing I have is this tool, which is, um, this is a little rod and I've put magnets on each end. And this way I can use this stick to kind of tell which direction the pole is on the magnet. So I have this little, um, this little pipe doohickey that goes on the gun and this magnet stick it won't this this end of the magnet won't stick to this one i don't know if you can see that but it's it's giving me resistance whereas the other side it's sticking right on so this magnet has a pole of whatever this direction is and this one i have to switch it around for it to hook on so this just means that magnets have to go a certain direction for this one and I have to go a certain direction for this one. And I use this stick to tell what direction is because if I'm gonna hook this magnet to one on the arm that it's going to hook to, I need to find, okay, it's sticking on that one. So what I do is I can put a magnet on this end and I know that this magnet has to be facing that way in the arm for this one to hook to it. And what I'll do, actually the magnet on the arm, so I have quarter inch magnets Okay, so these are our quarter inch wide. And then I also have, these are one eighth of an inch wide. So basically half of the width of this one. I'm not a mathematician, but I'm gonna say that's about half. Quarter, uh, a quarter to an eighth. Should be, should be half. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, right, is I have this other little tiny magnet and I know what direction the magnet has to go into the arm. So I take my marker and I mark on this magnet, that the side that's facing out, a black mark. So now I know when I pull this magnet off of whatever it's sticking to and it falls around and I don't know which side is up, I now have this mark on it that shows me what direction it needs to go. And because this is going to be sticking to it, I know that the black mark on this magnet needs to stick into the arm. So if I, if I have this magnet that has a black mark on it and I put it in the arm and the black mark is sticking out, then I know that this won't hook to it because that's just the way magnets work, right? <laughs> Again, <laughs> Mad Maxian, right? It just You just gotta do it the way it works. So the black one, this black mark will go into the arm and then it will hook to this. And I use this stick to kind of find polarities on stuff. No, you don't have to use a stick, but I've just found that it's beneficial. Now, this pipe thing with magnets on it, I have already drilled this one out. So this is a tiny thing, but I would drill holes into it and then I put magnets in it and I put them in to match my other riptides that I've already done so that these little pipe things are actually interchangeable between all the riptides. They all use the same polarity on both sides. And the guns that I'm going to be magnetizing already have the magnet in it that lets the little pipe hook to it. So this little pipe thing is already connected to my guns, but I haven't connected it to the arm. And what I'm really gonna be showing you how to drill is the big piece right here. This is gonna be a big magnet that hooks to the arm of the robot. And um, this one is going to do it as well. So like I said, this one's already set up and we're gonna show you the big thing. Now, quick tip on if you are doing these little magnets, this is my third one that I did and I found it was best to do this little one before I glued these two halves together. This gun comes in two halves and I drilled this out beforehand, and then I was able to get into the inside of the weapon, and what I found was the thickness of the plastic was about the same as the magnet itself. So I took a little bit of sprue, bored up the, the window, so to speak, of the, drill, of the hole I just drilled, and I glued this magnet in based on the polarity of my pipe thing. Hopefully that makes sense and can maybe help you a little bit there. But let's get into this. Now, I actually need to clip off the arm and get it magnetized. 
Oh yeah, I forgot guys, but I'm going to put my timer back on. If you watched my other videos, you'll remember that I had a timer that was tracking my uh, build time. And whereas this is actually part of me building the Riptide, I'm going to put it on the timer, even though I'm doing this little uh, magnet tutorial. All right, so let's jump in. All that I'm going to need for this is the forearm. So I'm gonna leave the shoulder still on the plastic. Another tip with this is make sure that the piece that we're drilling is dry because I'm going to be drilling in between these two halves that I just glued together. If it's not very sturdy and, and dry, then the pressure from the drill bit can cause the forearm to just split in half. Then I have to basically re-glue it and that's not ideal. So what I'm going to do is let this piece dry because I'm going to have to be drilling into that. However, I do know that I'm going to be drilling about halfway through this. And you can see an indent on this gun where this little notch in the forearm is going to fit inside the gun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drilling the gun out and I'm just going to place my drill just by eyeballing it. I know that it's gonna be about center of this notched piece. So I'm going to drill exactly in the center of this notch and then eventually I will be drilling exactly in the center of this arms notch and the two magnets will go together. What I want to do is make sure the polarity again is the same. So I had this example magnet, I'm gonna put that back. I'm going to make sure that the polarities are the same. So you might be thinking, what magnets are you using? I get my magnets typically from eBay. And when, you, when I've searched for magnets online, they come in different strengths of magnets. Right now I have an N35 and an N42 strength of magnets. For my other two big guns, my other two Riptide's main gun, I have been using N35 1 quarter inch by 1 16th inch magnets. And I have found that the strength of these are strong enough that it's not going to fall off but it's also not so strong that I'm worried I'm going to break the shoulder joint when I pull it off of the arm. And especially with the little hose that keeps it stuck on there as well, having that second point of contact, I have found that the gun stays in place quite well between the two. And then the question of what kind of magnets do I use for the little hose, this is where I use the 1 8 inch round by 1 16th inch and the same size drill bit. It barely fits the hole of the little hose thing that I've been talking about. And I found that I am able to drill through it deep enough to get the magnet flush. The magnet doesn't have to be exactly flush on this one, as long as the magnets that it's connecting to are deep enough into the model. Now what I did for this little hose is I used N42 magnets on this actual hose part to make it strong and make it grippy to what it needs to grip into. And then on the gun itself, I used N35 magnets just because I thought that that would be a better way to do it so that the less strong magnet is hooked to the model and the strong magnet is hooked to this little piece that I don't wanna bump and have it fly away on me, which probably won't happen. Um, it's it's a really it's a really secure hold. For the jetpacks, I'm using they are N35 and they are the quarter inch, so the bigger magnet. And then for something like these plasma rifles, what I did with these is I bored a hole all the way through the weapon, and I have a magnet on each side. These are the smaller magnet with the stronger hold against the bigger magnet with a less strong hold. And what I wanted to do there was I wanted a secure connection. This is just what I've been using on my suits is a bigger magnet and then letting a smaller one hook to it. Cause then I kind of have some play on where it goes and I kind of like that. When it's small magnet to small magnet, sometimes I've just found issues with it lining up properly. When I give myself this bigger magnet space to hook it to, I've just found that to be uh, more, I just like it more. Okay, that, that gets confusing and hard to explain, but I wanted to cover all of those little bits and pieces 
because sometimes you are working on the the side the jet packs or some other um, additional add-on and sometimes you're working on the main gun i just wanted to have that information out there because if if someone was asking me kind of what magnets i used what the best way is um again i i'm still experimenting with my magnets i have tons of models that use them and i like i said with these i found that this I found this to be what I like right now the most, which is the big magnet on the suit, the little magnet on the gun, but the little magnet is stronger and the big one's a little weaker. So the gun still sticks really strong to it, but it's just, it's a good connection and it, it has a little bit of leniency with the size differences. That's what I really like right now. Even my, even my Cold Star Commander, so he has magnets on the inside of his jetpacks uh, as well, just like the Riptide does. And so that's why he's on the table because I, can, I am using the same polarities that I had already set up on the Cold Stars inside jetpacks and I copied that to the Riptide's jetpacks so that any weapon that I can hook on my, on my uh, Cold Star, I can come over here and basically just hook that up on my Riptide here as well. So the polarities are gonna be the same and that just gives me more access to options as they jump between models because I can even take this plasma rifle off of the Riptide and I can attach it to uh, my Cold Star here if I really wanted to. Yeah, so that's the way that goes. And then a question that might be asked is, what polarities did you do on the inside of the jetpacks? And um, I don't know which ones they are right now, but as a demonstration, if I have one weapon, right? So like I said, I took my plasma rifle, and if it will zoom in here, I have my plasma rifle where I've drilled all the way through and I have a magnet on this side and a magnet on this side. And this is, basically a row of magnets they're all hooked together so the one side's polarity and the other sides are going to be different but what this means is i can hook it to this side of the riptide and when i pull it off if i go straight across without moving it at all it's not going to hook up with this other side but once i twist it and use the opposite side of the magnet it's going to hook in so that means, yes, I can use this weapon on either side, but on this side, the little um, antennas that the plasma rifle has, so it has an, um, these right now they're on the top side. When I flip it over, the antennas are on the bottom. So the plasma rifle on this side, I can have it so that the antennas are facing down. And on this side, I can have it so that those little antennas are facing up. And I like the look of the little antennas facing up. And the way these are magnetized just gives me that option that I can do it either way. So when you work with magnets and the more you work with them, the more you'll get used to them. But there are so many little details that it's good to dry fit them, test them out, good to mark them down as you do them. Meaning you use something like I've created here um, to double check polarities of things. The, these are a lighter magnet, so I can stick it to one of the stronger magnets and figure out polarity of this in here. And then, like I said, you put the other magnet on this end, mark it, and so you know the direction that the poles need to go so that you don't screw up the direction of the poles and have something that you have to dig a magnet out of because the magnet is in the wrong way. Um, I've had to do that. I've done it on on one of the guns, I think, the main gun. I It wasn't all the way dry, but I had put something in and, and realized, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to be seeing this mark, I don't think. And so I tested it out real quick and it was the wrong way because somehow I had switched it up and um, I was able to get it popped back out, luckily, and then set the right way. Now, some people have talked about using metal. So having a magnet stick to metal and then the polarity doesn't matter. That is a way around it. I find that I like the strength of having two magnets stick together 
it, this is just the way that I do it. It just makes sense to me this way. Even though you have to deal with polarities, I just like the way that it hooks together with two magnets. Okay, so back to the guns. I need to drill a hole. I'm doing the quarter inch drill. So I have a quarter inch bit right here. Bit. And here goes the madness, okay? This gun is already dried as far as, um, as far as that goes. So one thing about my drill real quick, I don't, I've had this thing for 10 years now, but it's got a, it's got a low setting where the bit goes, I can, I can go really slow with it if I need to. That's good. And then I also have a high setting where I can crank it up and go faster with it. So it just is going to depend on what I want to do if I'm doing it fast or slow because if you haven't drilled this type of plastic before, what you'll do is if you're soft with it, you'll kind of chip, you'll dig away at the plastic as you go. And then eventually you'll break through it and the bit will bite into the plastic. And if you're pushing too hard too fast, you'll get a big bite out of it and then it can kind of screw it up. If you go really slow, you, you're kind of better off if you go kind of slow. Slow meaning, meaning putting light pressure on it and not just shoving through. Like I could go with a really fast speed and just apply light pressure to it and it would slowly chip away the plastic. So sometimes I do that. Sometimes when I'm in a hurry, I just, I just lay it on and I, I get it going and I, and I punch through the plastic, so to speak. So I just want you to be aware of that if this is kind of like a first thing for you or if this is kind of a first time for you, just obviously you're gonna be careful. They also make hand drills. Now you can use these to great, uh, uh, to great effect. You can use these to gr uh, with great results. This one has a 1 8 inch in it and I actually can't get my quarter inch in my hand drill, but a hand drill gives you great precision and um, you put pressure on it back here and you twist it with this and the hand drill you can go slow and you can see every cut that you're making. And I've, I've had a lot of great, um, and see, I can even just kind of do a pilot hole here with this one. The, I, the hand drill, you can really feel the plastic giving way as you cut it. So if you can get a hand drill that'll hold a big enough bit for the magnet that you're using, hand drills are great. Again, I just have this one. This is from Hobby Lobby, I believe, forever ago. It fits all sorts of sizes. I use this to drill barrel holes, which obviously I switch out the bits. Comes with all sorts of bits. Just keep that in mind. You don't have to use the power drill. This is more, I would say, a little bit more along the lines of you've, you've done magnets before and you know what you're doing. Because one of the cons of the drill is, like I said, it can bite. And if you're going, if you're drilling fast and it bites into the plastic and it, you can twist it really fast, it can rip it out of your hand, it can punch through too fast. You, you want to understand what you're doing with the drill, which comes with practice. But if you start with the hand one, you're going to have a lot more control. You're going to just be able to understand how the plastic works under each uh, drill turn. But I, anyway, I do love the hand drill because you can really feel how the bit is biting into the plastic and you can, you can really uh, work it. You can almost massage it into a really clean hole. This tool is, is more, this is where, <laughs> If I'm, if I'm just gonna keep using the phrase Ma Mad Maxian, the, the drill is definitely more Mad Maxian. So I want all those disclaimers out there before you jump in and just go nuts with this. Okay, Archon Dow, you have been rambling for forever. When are you gonna actually get into this? Well, let's jump in. So I've got this guy and here we go. I'm gonna just start it off. I am on my high setting, but I'm gonna start it off slow and you're gonna hear me blowing out the plastic bits that are in there. And I'm also going to be looking at this a lot and, and lining it up. I, again, my goal is to make sure that this hole is relatively close to the center. With the drill spinning at fast speeds, sometimes the bit can get off. It can kind of spin around and get off of where you are supposed to be. So it's, 
it's good to take out a little bit. I also don't want to talk over the drilling because I feel like that's going to be hard to hear. So you want to do a little bit and make sure that you're on, on pace here. Another thing with drilling, there's so much lead up, I know, but you, ha you, want the, you want the hole to be kind of clean and straight. So you want to look at it from, look at your gun and your drill bit from this angle and make sure that you're lined up straight to go in. If you're at an angle, but you don't see it right away because you're looking at it from another direction, like if you're looking at the gun from, um, if you twist everything and you're looking at it from this direction, it looks straight. But then you look at it from this direction and it's like off. Like, okay, so I've got it off on one side. This is hard because of this dang drill. Let me use the hand drill. So here's an example. Let's say I, if I look at this and it's off, like I'm looking straight at this weapon, but my drill is going in at an angle. I can actually twist the whole thing and look at it from this side and think, okay, the drill is really straight. But then I come back to this side and it's at an angle. So what you need to do is look at it from this side and make sure it's straight as you're drilling, right? And then you need to look at this side. I had a, a, a neighbor who was an older gentleman who was really great and he helped me do some fence posts. And so he called it uh, pitch and plumb for a fence post. So it's kind of like leveling, but instead of leveling it uh, horizontally on the wall, you wanna make sure that you're going in straight from this angle, straight from this angle. Okay, so many tips, holy cow. Sweet. Now let's, now for the moment of truth, and you're gonna have to forgive me because to show you this on the camera, I'm actually doing this at a kind of odd angle. Okay, next tip. You want, you typically want to drill into the plastic deep enough that the magnet can sit flush with the plastic or flush against what um, is going to be on the hand. Now, I, this hand has these grooves that line up with the grooves in the gun. And I kind of want to have a little bit of these grooves connecting inside the gun when I do this. So that means that the gun, the magnet on the arm is going to be about as deep as this little notch in the arm, in the forearm. And so I need the magnet to actually sit a little below the highest point of plastic on this. So I'm going to actually drive all the way through this and then I'm going to show you how to, I make a little stilt and the, and glue the magnet on that and then put it in there to kind of be the right direction. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Okay, I have gone all the way through. That's what I wanted to do. I'm going to drill a little bit more into the plastic to make sure that the bottom part of this that I'm gonna glue to is more of a flat surface, flat-ish surface. Okay, I have successfully drilled down into the gun just like I wanted to. It is relatively straight, looking good. And the next step is going to be figuring out how tall this little stilt thing that I was talking about needs to be. So what are you talking about? You're crazy. Well, if this thing, if I were to just drop a magnet in here, it's gonna go way down in there. So I have this stack of magnets and I'm gonna count how many magnets disappear and then that'll tell me how deep it is, right? Or, or the other way I can do that is figure out where the magnet is showing up top here. Like, see this? I can't tell. Um, the magnet in there is basically flush with where I need it to be. But I'm not gonna glue a bunch of magnets in there. But if I know I need to go about that deep in there, and then I use some other, like my magnet stick, right? And I pull this out, I can count the number of magnets that are in there. In this case, that number is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I want six magnets because there's seven magnets on this, but the top one is kind of where I want it. 
this uh, the sixth one is going to be how deep I want to go in and what I'm going to use as a stilt is a piece of sprue so I'm going to take my cutters and I'm going to cut a piece of this sprue so that it is I want it to be flat on the end so so that it will sit in the bottom and I want it to be flat on the other end so that the magnet will stick to it I'm gonna clip a piece of sprue that I know is a little longer than the six magnets deep that I need it to be. I'm going to line it up with these magnets and I'm going to cut it at this six magnet depth. I'm gonna give myself a little bit extra in case I need a little bit extra because you know, sometimes, sometimes you just gotta cut twice and measure once, just kidding. What we're doing is doing it a little bit extra long because if I go short, then I have to cut a whole brand new one. But if I cut it a little bit long, then I can test out the depth on this and I can always cut a tiny bit off again. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take one of the guns that I have already magnetized and the polarity on all my guns has been the same so far. So I'm just going to copy any gun that I want and I use this stick again, right? So it's sticking to this. I take my one magnet that's going to go inside the gun and it's going to stick to the opposite end of this stick which means I know the polarity is going this direction so I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to mark this magnet so now I have a marking which says this magnet needs to stick up so because I know that I'm going to make sure that when I stick this magnet into the gun this marking is going to be visible to me because then it's the same polarity as the one that I've just done here. So I don't want to put glue on this side. I want to put glue on the opposite side. So I'm going to use this stick that I have, swap my magnet around. So now the side that I did not mark is facing up because this is the side that I want to glue this post to. Here's where I get my super glue. And I'm just gonna glue this little post to it, stick it there. It's enough that it should hold for a minute while I work with it. And I'm going to test drive it into this hole that I just did. And for some reason, I don't, maybe I grabbed the wrong stilt. Did I have two stilts? This looks like the one, but it, somehow it is like crazy long. So I'm just gonna cut it down. <laughs> At this point, I mean, I'm just kind of guessing on the cuts. It's an educated guess, but I don't, for some reason, the magnet measuring trick that I've done on my other ones is not working for this one. The last one I did, it was like first try. So this one is now with the stilt a little bit below the plastic line. That's what I like to see. I don't think I need to go higher. I don't think I'm going to go any higher on this one. And now you're kind of wondering, well, you said if you cut it too short, you couldn't go higher. Well, that's actually not true either because what I can do if I go too deep in is I can find another little piece of plastic or whatever, uh, something with a, a shallow depth of plastic, just a little sliver. I can pull this out and I can glue that piece on the end of this and that'll give me more height. At this point, I don't need more height. So what I'm going to do is take my super glue I'm going to glue, I'm going to put a helping of glue on the edges here. This is where the magnet should be sticking. I don't really want to get too much glue on the top side of the plastic. I want to try to keep it clean up there. Then I'll come to my stilt and I'm going to put glue on the bottom of it that's going to stick to the inside of the gun. And I'm going to line the edge of this magnet as well. I just want to make sure there's a healthy enough helping of super glue that I'm not gonna have a problem with it coming out. So now I've got the glue on this, I've got the glue on this, and I'm gonna slide that in. And I'm gonna make sure that it's where I want it, that it's flush and that it's level in the gun. Okay, um, now <laughs> I know super glue binds your skin perfectly or fast or whatever, but I actually am just gonna wipe that off with my finger. Um, don't try that at home kids, get a grown up, get a paper towel but a Mad Maxian tip to keep with the theme is that you can actually get the super glue on your finger and if you rub it really fast between your fingers, it will glue instantly, but it doesn't like stick your fingers together. It just kind of 
now I've kind of got a thin layer of, of glue on my fingers. But the more thin layers of glue I get on my fingers, the less they will stick to the glue anyway. So it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of a weird situation there. If you've worked a lot with super glue, you kind of just get used to these funny little things. Now I'm going to take this other chunk of sprue and I'm going to use this. It kind of has a, a point on it. I'm going to dig out these corners where I've had a little bit of super glue spill over. I just kind of want, like I said, I want the top of this to be fairly clean. I'm going to take even a little, just a little piece of paper towel and I'm going to rub that into the super glue as well to just clean it up, the part that's on the top. And there we go. We have a magnet now in the gun. I am going to uh, double check this magnet on one of these models that I, I've already done it on. And yep, it sticks to it. We're good there. Right polarity. That can be a way to double check things is just do it on your other models that already have it. Okay, so this gun looks good. At least as good as it's gonna get, right? Okay, I've got this arm. Now I'm gonna have to do two. Oh yeah, so you can kind of see when I put this in here that there's super glue still in the cracks coming off but that'll be fine. If it dry, if the super glue dries a little bit in those cracks, I can dig it out with a, uh, like I use my, I just use a sharp end of these little scissors to get, dig some super glue out. This arm will need a magnet in this little hole to hook the hose together. And then we need a magnet on the bottom here, like we talked about. I'm gonna think that this is dried enough at this point and I'm going to drill it. I have not cleaned the mold lines yet, that's fine. I can always do that later. This has this arm kind of has a little hole in it, and this is a, a big drill bit. I'm actually gonna start out on the low setting because I need to get dug into this area. I'm starting to dig in. I need to make sure that I'm in the right spot though. And I can always shift my drill bit a little bit to one side as I go. So at this point, I am basically in the middle of these two, and that's where I wanna be. And I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. With this one, I can't remember if I went all the way through. I think I'm gonna try to not go all the way through with this one, which means I need to just be careful with it. And the depth that I'm looking for is with the notch on this arm, I want my magnet to be basically flush with the notch. And so I can take a stack of magnets and I can push it against it and I can see where this magnet is gonna end. Hopefully some of these little details are getting picked up on the camera. If not, my bad. And if I need to, I can do another example magnet on something else. And I kind of had it flush, but I'm gonna go a little bit extra. I don't want any piece of the magnet really hanging out over the edge. And there I just bit into the plastic. Um, it dug in too far, I screwed it up, and it, it got a hold of it and it ripped it out of my hands. That's one of the, like we said, the, the cons of using the drill and I'm sure there's going to be someone who's like you, you idiot or something but you know that's the way it goes sometimes but luckily I've done enough of these that it's going to be the same it's going to be the same uh, process as before I drill all the way through and there's some discoloration here where I bent it a little bit, but that is, um, that's going to be just fine. That's going to, it's all going to be fine once we paint it. And it's not going to matter with the gun. Still going to lock in easily to the gun. So I'm sure I did this on my other ones at some point too. So we're going to follow the same process again with the stilt and the polarity. So again, I'm going to come back to this gun, I'm going to grab my little polarity stick here. And so this is the polarity of this gun. And I'm gonna take my other magnet 
and stick it on the other end of this polarity stick that I have. I'm going to mark it. Hey man, this is why we call it Mad Maxian, right? You just, you just go crazy with it. Um, okay, an important thing to note with this is I have marked it again, but this time the magnet that got marked is going to be going into the opposite thing. It's going to be going into the arm and not the gun. That means that it needs to go this direction to line up polarity wise. So the marking now, when I, when I did this gun, I needed the marking to show because that means the polarity is up. In this one, I need the marking to not show. So the marking needs to not show when I put it in the arm, which means I need to glue, I'm gonna super glue the stilt onto the marking side. Now I don't know how deep I need to make that stilt yet. I'm going to test out my method from before where I put in all of these and this is where I want the magnet to be, okay? I want the magnet to be, oops, excuse me little guy. I want the magnet to be flush with the part that's sticking out. If not flush, I want it to be a little bit in there more. I don't want it to be sticking out too much. Okay, so I have all these. I know how long I need to make my next stilt. I'm going to grab, let's see, I don't wanna lose anything. I'm going to cut off a new piece of sprue here that we're gonna to try to use for the next stilt. So if, we're, if you're still here, you're here for the madness, let's keep going with the madness. Where, oh man, where should I put? This is the problem with having a messy workstation because I'm in the middle of a build. And I could clean it up, but I just gotta keep going. And that's the thing, like, so Archon Dell, why are you doing this? You know, why are you laughing and saying that this is the Mad Max way and it's, you know, you're, you're just going crazy on it? Well, my Tau started as a break from my Dark Eldar. And I really spent too much time worrying about every single little detail on them, which was cool and fun at the time, and it still will be, but um, my tower a way for me to kind of break free from that and just go for it. And what I found is if I stop worrying about every little detail and just go for it, then I actually get my models done instead of just wanting to get them done but never having the time to because I put too much time into it. And I'm too... I mean, if this is your first build ever, take the time and do it, just like my Dark Eldar army you know, take your time. But once you've been doing it for long enough, it's like, I just need, I just need to get something done and it's gonna feel a lot better to get it done than to worry about doing it wrong or worry about screwing it up. Obviously I don't want to, I'm, this goes back to that, you know, what's going on under the surface when a duck swims. It could be, it could be, I, this is, I took this from somebody else that said it. Who knows what's going on under the water? It could have just two legs with webbed feet that it's kicking to go forward. But in the same vein, it could have one leg with no feet. It uses its leg as a rudder and just is farting for propulsion to get around and steering with its leg with no feet on it. So in that same vein with these magnets, all of the things that are going on right here are all gonna be hidden when it hooks onto the arm. And as long as it hooks on and is straight and looks good on the model, especially once it's done being painted, then if I break through the plastic, like I'm not really ruining the model. There's kind of a lot of times ways to just come back from that. Because sure, sometimes you might want to drill through and not break all the way through, but sometimes you have to break all the way through. And so let me get back to working on this. There's a little bit of, uh, I don't know, life wisdom maybe, probably not. <laughs> okay, this stilt thing, I've got it, let's glue it. Again, polarities, I know that I need to glue it to the marked side of this magnet. Okay, let's glue the stilt. Actually, I want the other side. The other side is a bit cleaner and I want the flush side to be sticking to the magnet. I'm gonna do a little bit more glue for it to hook to. So I would say even if you're 
someone who started a 40k project have kind of gotten bogged down with it, it can be really fun to just start a different one and say, you know what, I'm getting bogged down with this current project that I'm working on. I would like to switch it up and do something else. Man, I can't get this one to stick. I just need it to stick fast. I'm really messing up on this one now. Okay, come on. The other problem is the other end of the stick has some glue on it, so my fingers are sticking to it. Now I've worn off the glue enough on the other end. It's still not... Oh, come on. Work with me here. Just want to do it. And sometimes if you're just going too fast, you're actually going to screw up even more, just like with this stilt thing. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of... still need to take a little bit of height off of this stilt thing. But yeah, sometimes if you are working too fast, you're going to screw things up and you need to slow down. Um, it's pretty deep. I want it to come out like a tiny bit. So this is where I grab... I have one of these little nubs that was... Um, I had to clip it off of one of the weapons to get the magnet on it. So it is a, it's a fairly flat piece. Also, doing this on camera is very different from just doing it on my own. So there's that. So glue, little piece of plastic. Come on now. Okay, so I've glued this little piece of plastic now and even more glue. Oh shoot, wait, I wasn't supposed to glue that yet. <laughs> I was supposed to size it up. Okay, I'm gonna size it up real quick and see if it's a good depth. Yep, that, uh, is that what I want? Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm gonna take a tiny bit off though. No, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drill a tiny bit more into this. Okay, so this should make it a little bit deeper. See, there's always a way to finagle it. Uh, that's great. And just as I said, I, oh, I'm not trying to be a perfectionist on this, but when it comes to it, there's a lot of cases where I, I am a perfectionist on it. And that's just the way it is. Because at the end of the day, these are expensive models. And so sometimes, basically what I'm saying is, do whatever the crap you want. Oh, sorry, I'm just doing that where you couldn't see it. Um, okay, so I put glue around the inside of that. And now I'm putting glue on this and glue on the bottom. I'm gonna add a little extra. Again, this glue doesn't matter, it's on the inside of the gun. So I can put a bunch. Oh, sorry, it's on the inside of the arm. We're gonna shove this in there. Bada bang, bada boom. I mean, once this is all said and done, she's gonna be beautiful. Taking any little excess off. And again, once it dries, I can scrape it down to be exactly where I want it. But yeah, this is, I really like the amount of um, flushness that this is. Now again, you want it level. You wanna, you wanna look down where you've done it and you want to see that the magnet is not like um, like skewed in one direction. You want it to be flat because that's going to give you the best hold at the end of the day. Perfect. Now, I said I wanted it to be a little bit, I wanted it to be basically flush with these little nubs but kind of down. I'm doing this too fast. I pulled it out. Come on. Oh, I keep pulling it out. Not phenomenal, guys. I mean, it's still going to look fine like we talked about on the outside, but I'm just kind of annoyed that I'm pulling it out. Because I had it where I wanted it, and then I put those clippers there, and it pulled it out. Now I just need to make sure that it's level. Come on. Oh. 
Okay, so, oh, sorry, I keep doing this in the wrong spot. Um, why did I put the clippers there? Because I was going to chop down this nub a tiny bit just because I know there's going to be a tiny bit of overflow glue on the gun too. So I just, I don't want there to be too much of something pushing it away. I, anyway, it's just me trying to make a good fit beforehand. Um, sweet. Okay, so we've got the arm. I still need to do another magnet there. I'm gonna let this one dry and set up a little bit before I do that one, which means I can move over to the heavy burst cannon gun. And we're just gonna do the same thing. You gotta line it up in the middle. Um, the little trough for where, for where the, um, where this little guider goes is different on the burst cannon, the heavy burst cannon. It's, it's really wide. And so you're still just aiming for the exact dead center. <laughs> and hopefully my messing up comes, not that I really messed up, but hopefully it provides some enjoyment. Again, I, I do want to go all the way through on this. But I'm, but I'm still, even though I'm going fast, I'm still just kind of pulsing my pressure on it. I kind of, I'm resting on it barely and letting it spin. And then I kind of test it by pushing in a little bit into the plastic. And I, Still need to make sure that I'm giving myself enough space. I need it to be in the very center. Okay, so I've gone through. I'm going to run it on the other side a little bit, smooth it out. I do not want to puncture through the other side of the gun when I'm going in here. That will that would would be a unfortunate one. So there are times when you can kind of be going crazy and there's times where you do need to take it slow. Okay, I do this thing, try to gauge a little bit how deep I need to go. Um, I'm gonna say the two on the end here are not going to be counted when I count these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, look at that. Clipping my stilt and we're going to check polarity. Okay, we've got polarity. We're gonna take one magnet. We're going to mark polarity on the magnet. Now this is going in the gun, so we want this marking to be facing up, which means I'm going to switch it to the other side of this. So now my marking is facing down away from me, so I can put glue on the non-marked side. There's some glue. Here is our stilt. And I would like to take just barely, barely a little bit off of this. I'm going to be a bit more careful this time. Maybe. That might have been too much. No, I'm good with that. That looks good. I'm going to clean up the hole I made a little bit with the scissors. Get the glue out. Glue on the inside here, the rim. Glue on the bottom of this and glue on the rim of the magnet. Stick it in. And bada bing, bada boom. Pull up some of the excess glue. And I'm gonna get a new scraper tool. I'm just gonna make sure that the magnet is in there flush and level. And I'm gonna scrape out the glue. And at this point I am, um, with this rag, pulling off the mark that I made on the magnet. But that is okay, because it is in there at this point. Great, I'm gonna let that set up a little bit. Again, I'm just gonna test these polarities. Yes, we're good there. And we're good there. Now I'm going to switch to the 1 8 inch. I need to drill into this piece of the forearm. I have my little pipe tool here. The magnet on this one is quite flush. So what that means for me is um, I'm going to drill in enough 
so that when I put the magnet in here, it's going to be flush with the inside of this lip. So I, I don't want it to stick out. Um, um, I just hooked it onto that. And at this point, I am gonna try to cut this nib off a little bit. And yeah, see, we, we've got it hooked now, the forearm to the gun. And even without the magnetization of this little pipe tool, but just sticking it in the little socket there, uh, we can see that it's gonna line up and that it's gonna be a solid hold. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. So where do we go from here? The last magnet is the forearm smaller magnet. I'm switching to low. I do... I do not want to um, go all the way through right now. Not that I couldn't fix it if I did, but it would just be easier if I don't. However, doing this on camera, like we said, is more difficult. I'm going to take just a stack of magnets and test how far in I've gone. Um, it's not flush to where I need it right now, so I need to go a little further. And I am testing out how flush it's going to be. That's looking like a good depth. But I am someone who likes to be thorough, so let's just make sure we have enough. Okay, that's definitely far enough. Now we need to check polarities on my little pipe tool here. And this, this is the top one. I need it to go that direction. I'm gonna use this magnet here. We've got polarities figured out. I'm gonna mark it. And the way this is, I know that my marking, the one that is on this end that I marked, needs to go in to the arm for it to be the correct polarity. So let's grab the glue and I'm gonna use this stick to shove it in. Got it. Just make sure that it's down all the way with, the thing is you have to use something that's not magnetic when you push it in because, uh, well obviously when you push it in the first time you kind of have to, oh I just pulled it out. You have to pry it off and then it stays in but then if I want to kind of push and make sure it's flush I use something that doesn't uh, have metal obviously there's a metal spout in this glue but it doesn't it's not enough to pull the magnet on okay the scissors however probably can pull the magnet out but what I want to do is just scrape like I've been doing scrape the glue off make sure I don't have an excess of glue just sitting on the plastic because I want that little pipe to be able to fit in there. And I might even take the little pipe thingy and just scrape a little bit off of the outside edge of where it's going to be going into the arm just to give it an easier fit. Because I don't want to be fighting this every time. And this is another one of those things where the plastic that I'm scraping off of this is not actually shown on the outside of the model when it's hooked in. So it's not going to make a difference if it's scraped or not because it doesn't actually sit on the outside of the model. So with scraping this, what we're going for is functionality. Function. Okay, so we've got this. You kind of have to find the groove, but once you find the groove, you've got the groove. Don't throw off the emperor's groove. Get this guy in here, give us a double check. Looking good. There we go, see, all that madness. And this is what we're left with, just an arm and a gun. Um, I'm gonna test this out and I hope I don't pull out the magnet. No, it looks like it's sticking in. Okay, so I'm gonna hook this in, bada bing. We're gonna slap this doohickey on. There it is. If you can see this, let me even try to get closer for you. Hello. We've got it, it's pretty flush. That is a nice flush pipe, brah. 
and it um it sticks it's really stuck quite well doesn't really go anywhere let's throw this over on the ion bada bing bada boom hello doesn't come off um the pipe is looking good and flush so once we get this painted up we can switch in between them and uh, obviously I need to clean up some mold lines on this arm, but everything is now set to go. We can glue the arm on, we can switch the weapons. So there you have it, folks. I hope you've enjoyed it. This is what we look like now on the inside of this weapon. This is what we look like on the bottom of this forearm. They hook together, shaboing boing, and we're gripping, and then same with this gun, what we're looking like on the inside there, and it hooks on as well. Uh, you just kind of have to find the right groove, and then there we go, it sits in, oh. Yeah, you just kind of have to, like when you put it on, you have to kind of find the right groove to let the arm sit in. But if you've done this where the magnet is um, down flush or a little bit below flush with the floor of this, and then it's also um, a little bit below flush this, the little nub here, then you know that you have enough leeway between the two. If you try to go too flush with it, or even above it, then if your magnet is gonna stick out on the end, or stick out past the plastic, and this magnet sticks out, then you're just hitting two magnets, magnets together. You won't have as deep uh, of a sit on the arm. Because you don't, I would say you don't really want the arm to be like sticking off of the gun necessarily. I mean, it's fine if it is, right? The whole thing comes down to what do you like the look of? What do you like the function of? With the hose being magnetized on the outside, um, it kind of does need to be all the way sitting down flush inside there to get the magnet on the hose to really connect as easy as it does on this. Um, yeah, you've watched me do the whole thing now. I magnetized it, drilled through, did the stilts, did the polarities, and now what I'm left with is just, you know, I've got my toy that I can play with, and all the work is done, and now I can just slap the little doohickey around. That, that sounds way... That came out wrong. Uh, you know, I can just throw the gun back and forth. Do I want this gun? Do I want that gun? And then I can just paint them. Ah! or drop them. You know, you can drop them or you can paint them either way. So I'm just gonna keep showing you because um, it's fun stuff. The ion one, so the ion one's little lock-in thing is much smaller than the burst rifle, uh, heavy burst cannon. So I find it harder to, to really find the groove with. The ion, you, you kind of need to, but, but look at once I get the pipe in there and it's like, it's locked in. So there you have it. I hope you guys have learned something. If not, I hope you had a great time. Don't mind me. I just found a thing that I need to, I, this is not the right tool for that. Don't use a giant knife to clean that out. Let me see if my little scissors will fit in there. Um, I hope you've had a good time and enjoyed this. If so, just let me know in the old comment section. And if not, well, that's fine too. You're probably not here if you didn't enjoy it. So, hey guys, it's been wonderful. I hope you have a good one. Uh, take care out there, be safe, and keep playing Warhammer, or keep doing any sort of tabletop hobbying, you know? Bust the drill out, bust the super glue out. Get those fingers stuck together. It's the way it's supposed to be, right? Okay, I need to get back to work on the rest of my riptides. It's been fun, and I'm sure we will do this again. I'm sure we will be doing this again at some point. Take care.